Welcome back to another episode of Car Stories with Sung Kang and Amelia Hartford. So, Amelia, question for you. Oh, dear. Um, when you go to a place like Starbucks or Baskin Robbins, mm-hmm. right? Um, and you pay with a credit card. Okay. And then they flip the screen over to you and there's like tip? 20, 25, 30%. Do 30. You tip? Tip always. 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 Tip everything, tip a lot. Even I'm, at the grocery store? I am so thankful to have an income and be in the position I am in. And I worked in food and service for so long in my life. Always tip. I'm a 30% or more person. But what if they didn't do anything? Tip. Really? Yeah. The, I'm in a better position there. And if I can help, that's all that matters. God, you're so much better human being than You don't me. like tipping? No, I love to tip. Like, I worked in the service industry forever. Mm-hmm. So when I'm at a restaurant, like, I make sure that you know, um, people are taken care of, right. right? However, when I feel pressured, like you buy a bottle of water and it's like a dollar ninety nine, and then there's a thirty percent tip option for that, and they didn't. It's not like, look, I'm about like being fair. It's like if you did something. So here, here's the uh, thing: if they were to raise the minimum wage and pay people more, they're just gonna make the cost of goods more. So there's no, they're not going to raise the minimum wage. So I feel like we as people who are fortunate enough to be able to help someone else's income, that's our responsibility because the big business isn't going to do but why it. Why don't they just raise the prices of the food then? Like I don't mind. They that. do. They they will. They but would. Then, but then why do I have? But to? not not everyone can afford raising the prices of food. Starbucks can. Mm, people who are buying. Yeah, but, but like, have you seen In and Out now but, for a double double? It's over ten dollars. So, that's fair. That's inflation, right? But they don't ask for a tip. How come In and Out doesn't ask for a tip? Well, they pay their their people, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. So, so, but Starbucks cannot. Like Starbucks is way well, bigger. No, than they In-N-Out. could, and they. I was, I'm pretty sure Starbucks Starbucks will actually help pay for your college and and give you health care. They do. Too. They pay yeah. for your college. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that is true. When when it comes to tipping, I'm just a tip always tip generously bad I, service even 20 percent for bad service for 20 yeah bad service yeah. bad food and you'll still tip yeah bad attitude maybe they're having a bad day huh really yeah i'm a tipper huh tip the tipping thing is like very stressful for me that's why i don't think about it i'm in a, i'm in a position where i can help someone more than i need it uh don't think about it i tip I went to the drive-thru with Teji to go get him a pup cup and Mm -hmm. myself a drink. And um, they pull out the credit card thing and, you know, and I tapped it and they had the tip thing. Yeah. And then I was, and then we met eyes. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, it's just one drink. I was like, They're like, I know you from Fast and Furious. What do I tip? And I was like, (coughs) and and, and I was trying to press like the $1 thing, right? And then I dropped the credit card, right? And and it was like a whole fee. I had to move the car up and like come out of the car. And she's just like, and I looked at her and I was like, oh, she's thinking, you cheap son of a gun. Like, Do you think it's only awkward because you make it awkward? They make it awkward. Why? Why is it like? Why is it that there's the thing is like at this place I've paid cash before and and there's no tip jar. I've seen tip jars. Well, not at this place. Huh. So there's no tip jar. So I'm like, I don't understand. If I pay cash, you're not you're not asked to leave a tip. But then with the credit card, it's like three dollar twenty five cents option for one thing. Anyway, okay. So uh, all right, all right. I, I'm not gonna win this argument. There's no argument here. It's just no. It's not. It's a yeah. it's a preference. It's also a new thing. Because when they you went to Japan, there's no tips. Right. There's not. They that actually, thing, in fact, right? they get insulted when you when you try to offer a tip. Yeah. Because so there's something wrong with this tip culture. Maybe. Right. It's the cost of going out. It is what it is. If you don't like it, don't go there. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. And I then, can't control but, it. You know, when I get a Domino's pizza delivery, oh, I, I, tip, I tip huge. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's the best pizza in the world. All right. So uh, speaking of best, uh, our next guest is old friend Johnny Lieberman. Yes. Co-host of The Inevitable with yes. our, one of our past guests, Ed Lowe, an old friend as well. Yeah. Johnny holds a high level position within the Motor Trend family and... 
Yeah, he's an incredible rider, very knowledgeable, knows mm-hmm. a lot about about cars. And it was really cool to deep dive with him because we, we had a conversation that I wasn't expecting to have. And he was a complete open book. Um, and it really, I feel like I'll be leaving this conversation a better person. I don't know how else to say that. Yeah, I think it's, I, I, it, it's cool to be able to have car conversations about cool cars and racing and all of that. But then you humanize the person behind that, right? And it's like, it was able, it was cool to you know have like a vulnerable like talk, right? Yeah. And be able to share things. I think probably most of the listeners wouldn't imagine like you go through or I go through or he goes through. And at the end of the day, we're all human and we all have, you know, problems and issues and things we're trying to overcome and become yeah. better, so. I always say if I'm not learning something, I kind of don't get as interested in it. That's why I love cars. So I'm constantly learning. And I feel like these conversations we have with people, I'm constantly learning things, which I find a gift mm. and so interesting. Yeah, I agree. Just like the gift of a Domino's pizza. <laughs> <laughs> All right, without further ado, Mr. Johnny Lieberman. <laughs> You're a dog guy too, right? Yeah. I got a dog. Just one? At the moment. We've had a couple. Had a couple. They, they come and go. What kind of dog do you have now? A mutt. Uh, she, Lemmy, is, we saw her mom. Her mom is a wiener dog. <laughs> um, dad is taller and fluffier, but no clue. <laughs> we, we found her at the pound. Aw. Yeah, she's she's getting up there, but she's, she's still pretty cute. Pretty stinky at this point, but pretty cute. It's hard when so. they pass, huh? I mean, we had what, you know, yeah, yes, yes, it's horrible when they pass. I've had, I've had, oof. one almost killed me, and uh, the other one was pretty sad, but yeah. Actually, I've had three. Yeah, it sucks. It's one of the worst things. Yeah. It's when, up there next to a person dying. It is. It's yeah. like a child, like, mm-hmm. dying. When, when my previous dog, we had two, we had actually three. We had two chow chows. Simba, the female, was, like, really attached to me. Yeah. And went, and... Um, and we had a Maltese that Simba actually killed. Um, oh Jesus! But uh, Simba, <laughs> that's horrible. But, but Simba <laughs> waited for me to come back from Germany. Like I was working, I came back, I come into the house. She jumps to give me a kiss, and then she lays down. Aww. And oh then, my God. and then um, I took her to the vet, and then the vet said you have to go get an MRI because there's something wrong with her. But she was like 13 already, yeah, right? Yeah, dog, yeah. dog years, and then. It was like during the Pinkberry kind of craze. Remember mm-hmm. Pinkberry, sure, the yogurt place? Sure, yeah. It was like dead summer. And I was like driving to the MRI place and um, Simba was in the back seat she, and she started like, you know, breathing hard. So I pulled over and I took her out of the car and she just passed away in my arm. Oh, and I started, yeah. it was like out of a movie. Yeah. I was like crying and like yelling at God and snot was coming down my nose and I'm like, ah! And then I look up and all these kids are eating their pink berry going, like it's <laughs> complete shot of this man Aww. just holding this dead dog like, ah! ah! <laughs> and I look up and I'm all, okay, I think uh, we will wrap this up real quick. Right? Yeah. Oh, that's the oh worst. No, it sucks. Yeah. It's horrible. Yeah, it's I couldn't do another dog forever. This is a great way to start a podcast. Yay, you know? <laughs> but, no, but it's also, you know, and then when we got Teji, you know, if if a dog's lifespan is like 10 to 13 years, 13 is like, that's, they live Depend, if they, Little dogs live longer. That's, that's a, you know, so a little dog in 15 yeah. years is, can be pretty normal. Big yeah. dogs live shorter. Like eight years, eight, 10. De- eight, 10. Depends on the size, yeah. That, and that, yeah. that's like that. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. And he's already four, so he reminds me. Oof, yeah. Life is short. Yeah. Right? And go for some cuddles and kisses, right? Like, yeah. As much as you can. Yeah. Right? Well said. Yeah. Bring it in. <laughs> <laughs> after the show, after the show. Yeah. Well, Johnny Lieberman, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for joining us yeah. today. This is so cool. This is, I mean, again, good to run into you at, at the Best Korean Barbecue in LA. Yes. And so. Parks Barbecue. Well, you guys ran into each other at Parks. Yes. It, you we, know Parks? Yeah, I love Parks. You love Parks. Do you love Parks? Of course. Okay, okay. So yeah. we have a mutual friend, Sang. Sang. Sang, Sang Yoon. Yep. is a restaurateur. He owns Father's Office. He's a big car guy. He's been on huge your show. Huge car guy, right? yeah. Huge, yeah, huge yeah, car, yeah, like yeah, yeah. official, right? Yeah. So funny story. So Sang 
think Father's Office, it's actually the one in Santa Monica is now, I think, 24 years old as of last wow. week. So I used to be really into homebrewing, and I was in a, this beer club, mm. and we had our meeting there. This was back in like 2001, and he had the best beer. At the time, you couldn't find good beer anywhere. It was, just didn't exist in restaurants. And he had like Pliny the Elder on tap. Like, <laughs> I love Pliny. <laughs> yeah. And, but again, this is 21 years or 23 years ago. <sighs> Anyways. Um, and I'm like, who, who is this guy? Like who? And they're like, oh, it's Sang, but he's, he's a real dick. And I'm like, <laughs> no, he, everyone likes me. And I remember I walk up, I like tap him on the shoulder. And I'm like, hey, man, like you have the, this is amazing. What a cool restaurant. And he literally just like looks at me and turns his back. Really? Doesn't say a word, just turns his back to me. And I'm like, fuck that guy. I don't know if we can swear on this podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Fuck this guy. Yeah. And I didn't, I had nothing to do with him. I, I, would, I stopped going to father's office. Oh, they got a good burger. I'm like, the guy, owner's an asshole. And then on Instagram, I get a message like, hey, man, like we should hang out. You know, like you want to go to parks? And I showed up and I like tell him that story. And he's just like, yeah, this sounds like something I do. <laughs> Do you yeah, think so. you think the connective tissue eventually was cars with saying? Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it, it tur turned out that I'm, I have a big interest in food and, you know, we have some mutual friends in the food world and the car world and everything. So, but yeah, for sure. But that was that was what was so funny was I was I was at parks with my son, my brother in law, and my nephew, and I'm telling stories about eating there with saying. I'm like, saying this, saying that. And my nephew, who's a huge Fast and Furious fan, thought I was talking about him. And he's just like, you come here with, he thought your name was Sang. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That's Sang, not Sung. Mm -hmm. And then we're walking out. I'm like, oh, hey, Sung. I was just <laughs> talking about you. And my nephew's like, just <laughs> starts, just like goes silent. Like, doesn't say a word. And then like running up, he's like, what's that? I can't believe you know him. I can't. <laughs> like, and the yeah. guy that I was with was the writer of the of the movies. Oh, seriously? Yeah. Oh, I mean, what was his name? Chris Morgan. Chris, right? Yeah, yeah. Nice guy. Yeah, he's super nice. Guy. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, how funny. It was just co coincidence. Small LA world. Yeah. yeah. So okay, so this was recent. This is like this in the past like week or so. A week and a half ago. Yeah. yeah. Oh, like so that. funny. Yeah. The day that Ed was here. As really? Yeah. That you know what's night. funny? On the podcast, Ed brought you up quite a few times. I'm yeah. like, you guys have this. Ed who? No, just kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, yeah, I've been working with Ed for over 13 years. Wow. Another one who was mean to me when I first <laughs> met him. Yeah. <laughs> well, Ed, Ed kind of is standoffish. Wait, too. Ed was mean to you? Yeah. Well, hey. But this was like back in. So I'll tell you exactly when this was. So I knew his name, you know, I uh, uh -huh. never really met him. And then we we're on the X6 launch. So okay. I guess this is like 2007. And he's there, and it's Motor Trend. I wasn't at Motor Trend at the time. I was at, I don't even know what I was at. But like, whoa, you know, Motor Trend, big big deal. And he had like a video guy with him. And this is, you know, again, 2007. So, And I remember I was like trying to say hello to him, just like wouldn't look at me, wouldn't give me the time of day, you know. So, um, but, you know, we've since, uh, we, we, I, was, I did a podcast with Ed this morning. So, you know. It seems like a, a, a reoccurring theme. That I, I mean, it could be. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's just those two, really. <laughs> when I first met Ed, Ed, he was very intimidating to me, too. Really? Yeah, because he I met him at Motor Trend. Yeah. And he was in a suit. Any right. Asian man in a suit. <laughs> Intimidates you? Yeah, totally intimidating. I'm like, he's wearing a suit. He's a corporate guy. Right, right, right. And right. Then, then you find out, like, oh, he, he, he's, he makes bread. Yeah, he's a goofy surfer. <laughs> he's super, super cool. Yeah, right? yeah, so yeah, you, yeah. You can never judge a man by his suit, right? Fair enough. I wasn't intimidated. I was just like, this guy just does not like me. But, you know. It's, Where it's were you riding at the time? I think it was, I was probably still at Jalopnik, and I might have also been writing for a site. I don't even know what's around anymore called The Truth About Cars. Okay. Um, but, that, yeah, I started in. I started writing about cars 2005. Um, Did you always want to do that? Like, yeah, in a way. Like, like you know, I love cars. My whole. I was just telling the story. I was trying to explain to a younger kid uh, how lucky they are. Like, you know. Where where I lived, uh, it, there was a there was a hill. I grew up in Thousand Oaks, and there was like the rich people lived on top of the hill. And I knew up there, a guy had a Lamborghini Yalpa, and it was green and it never moved. Now the reason it never moved is because it couldn't move. But I didn't know that. And I could ride my bike up the hill, and like once a week or more, I would go up there just to look at it because at the time nobody made a, a Yalpa poster. There was no Yalpas on television. There was no internet maybe once every four years road and track in a black and white photo would have a picture of a Yalpa. That's it. That's, that's, that's how you saw a Yalpa unless you got a Lamborghini book, which there really weren't any Lamborghini books. So like, 
you know, I, I, I was, I've always been super into cars. I used to, I've always been a, a, a writer and I used to write like fiction stories based on what I'd read in, you know, Car and Driver uh, about like, you know, the hero would drive a GTI because like a GTI was like a big deal in like 1980, whatever. Uh, you know, I've read like these like horrible James Bond ripoff stories where the guy's driving a GTI because that really appealed to me, you know. Um, and then, yeah, I did a bunch of others, a lot of other stuff in my life. And then... Um, when I was 25, I found myself unemployed. I was doing like software, dot-com bubble burst, and I was back in L.A. And I cold-called Motor Trend, and they were basically like, yeah, kid, you'll never work here. <laughs> they actually gave me good advice. Uh -huh. I just chose not to listen to it. Uh -huh. uh, and then um, fast forward, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a webmaster at, at uh, Cal Arts, the art school up by Magic Mountain. And I turned 30, and I I couldn't figure out a way to goof off. I was so bored. Like I'd reached the end of the internet, I just, I was it. And, and this like voice, this realization hit me. And it's like, if you don't get up out of this chair now, you're gonna turn 40 sitting in this little tiny office by yourself, another decade of your life gone, like do something. And it was a real like panic attack moment. And this uh, Truth About Cars at the time was just one guy, Robert Farrago. And I just sent him an email, like I wanna, I wanna write about cars. And he said, "Go find a car and review it." And um, it, it was a, it was a the, remember the Sabaru, the Saab 92X, mm -hmm. which was a WRX wagon, uh, dressed up as a Saab. So my buddy had one. I go, "Hey, can I borrow your car?" And I took it up Angeles Crest and like wrote a review. And you know, long story short, he was like, "Yeah, okay, that's pretty good. I'll, I'll send you a press car." And then the rest is sort of history. And now I've been at Motor Trend like over 13 years. Wow. So wow. yeah, so pretty crazy. But like, it was yeah, it was a real like better start moving type of realization, you know? You know what's, what is awesome about being able to sit down with someone, right, and getting to know them? I was like, what keeps Johnny's, like, headlights shining on high beam? Because <laughs> I meet people, I use this, I, I use that kind of phrase a lot. Like, when I meet people that are even younger than me, I go, dude, your headlights are damn in life. Mm. Like, you're, like, you're just kind of in neutral, just kind of coasting through life, right? And then you meet people, all different different ages, right? And you're like, geez, that, that that their lights are high beam and they're revving hard in life, right? They're just going, they're redlining through life. It's awesome, right? It's like I want to live like that. And going back to, and I want to put an emphasis on that. At thirty, yeah, you had the courage because it's it's not it, it's easy to just say and kind of overlook, but to go, I am uncomfortable going out like this. I'm gonna go f fucking chase my dream. Yeah, I guess just like I just have this uh, awareness. Life is precious and short and fleeting, and like just take advantage of the time that you have here because it doesn't last forever. You know, it just really doesn't. So. Where'd you get that? I don't know. Look. <laughs> I mean, probably you know, my dad died real suddenly when I was 25. He just mm. had a heart attack and died. And I didn't really deal with it very well, but, you know, I, I sort of, I think that had a lot to do with it. And then recently, uh, we were talking about dogs dying. I've had, like, people dying. I mean, it hasn't been that recent, but, like, a few years ago. Like, I, you know, it was like my, the Davey who I was talking about, I, I, uh, my mother-in-law, uh, my mother, my sister, my best friend, they all died kind of like every six months. One of them was wow. was dropping. Yeah. And, um, you know, and then, you have, you know, if you have children, you know, that like they just don't stop growing, you know. And like it's it's getting to the point where my kid's about to turn seven and like I can still hug him and snuggle him. But like sometimes it's like, no, I don't want to hold hands. I'm like, oh, that's my no. favorite thing in the world is like mm -hmm. holding hands when we cross the street. Like. Really okay, you know, you know, you don't want to like be like hold my hand because it's kind of weird, but um, yeah, it's just it's just this I don't know awareness of it. You know, the life is short and fleeting, and like uh, you know, make 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 hay while the sun is still shining, type thing. Make hay while the sun is still shining. You know, yeah. that should uh, be a t-shirt too. <laughs> uh, we, we should start something yeah, here. Yeah, we, gotta, we gotta make these t-shirts. Every guest like drop <laughs> drop season. Yeah. Oh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll keep, let's keep talking. I'll come up with something better than that. But, but yeah, so you know. Um, Can I get morbid for a second? Is yeah, that okay? yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. Do you feel like life's almost over? You're not that. Like you're not that old. I'm not saying it like <laughs> what? that. What? 
like, what kind of question I, I, is that? It's morbid. That? Seriously, oh, like you say, life went by in twenty love, years uh, so quickly. I, Does I, that scare I, you for I the love rest the of? Young. I love the young. I think, <laughs> I, and I'm not saying for you. Like I'm telling you, I turned geez, thirty. I'm and older I'm like, than Johnny, by the way. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. This one foot in the grave. Over here. <laughs> um, no, no, I don't. I don't think like, of it do that way. Do you get way. scared of getting older? No, but you know what? I hang out with uh, older people that that make me feel young. You know what I mean? So like, I have like I do this other podcast, Spike's Car Radio. And Spike and Zuckerman, they're both about to turn 60 and they're youthful and they're running around and they're doing stuff. So when I see, you know, I used to see older people as like, oh, like they're so old, they can't do anything. So no, I'm, I'm, I'm not scared of that. My question was phrased too poorly. but No, 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 <laughs> I love it. I'm not scared of dying per se. I'm just scared of like, you know, not, very few things happen overnight and you got to put in the work and all that and just like... I just want to take advantage of the time. I want to make the most of this opera, this really crazy sitting here on this like little tiny rock orbiting a small sun on the edge of a galaxy. Like it's pretty rare that you get, you know, 70, 80, 90 years on this rock, like take advantage of it. Do you see a 50 year old and go, God dang, that's an old no, ass dude. No, not at all. I, what, what scares me and what uh, uh, prompts the question is how fast life goes. Because I really feel like the last decade of my life like went by so fast. And I heard the analogy of like a toilet paper roll when you're a baby, you're just at the beginning. And the next thing you know, it's like almost at the end. Because That's as, a horrible analogy <laughs> for a lot of reasons. Because, I've never heard that before. That's because, a good analogy, though. Because as you get older, it goes faster and faster. Because yeah. like when you're a kid and you're in school, the end of class, you're looking at the clock, you're like, how is this going so slow? And then as you get oh, older, yeah, it blinks. Yeah. And then I imagine, at least based on people I talk to, the older you get, the quicker it gets. So and that's fast. what scares yeah. me, because I want, I don't want it to go by too fast. How about, how about you, Johnny? I remember in my 20s, time was slow. Yeah. Like, I was like, geez, get to the weekend. Come on, man. Yeah. And now I wake up, and it's 7 p.m. It is, you're right. It, <laughs> is, yeah. it is really funny how if I have something to do that week, it's like, it's just there instantly. It's like there's, it used to be like, oh, that's on Thursday, like this podcast. Uh, like that's in four days, but it's like, it's Monday, now it's Thursday. And it, it is quick. But I, I think uh, having kids, at least in my case, like that it really sped up time because I, I still, you know, your phone's like six years ago today. And I'm like, how was that six years ago? Like he, what? It's the same kid, you know? And it's like, it, it, it really, I think kind of distorts time in a way yeah um yeah I, I i i but then at the same time like if i stop that's the thing is it's rare to like stop and not just go right on your phone if you stop and think about i think about what i've done in my you know car career it's like i could write a really good book because i've done so much you know like it's it's crazy um would you write a book I've I've always wanted to write a book. I don't know who would read it, but I've always wanted to write I'd a read book. I'd read it. I'll read it. You got two right here. <laughs> okay, that's, yeah. that's two. Um, yeah, you know, because I it's just like I've I've done some like pretty wild stuff, um, and you know, but it's also like you know, there's also the temptation to do like a tell all, you know, because I know I know, I've seen some, stuff. <laughs> but it's also like, Ooh, boy, does anyone really want like an inside baseball of a very obscure industry? I want to know all about Ed, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you off air. <laughs> there's a lot to tell. <laughs> I know it's listening to this right now. There, there's a, there's a lot to tell. Uh, yeah, yeah. He, he put he, he presents well, as you say. He, he dresses up. Really well. I don't know. Is it, is it like insanely narcissistic to like? I'm gonna write a book about me. You know, like probably. Um, I don't think so. But Why? if it's interesting, it's interesting. You know what I mean? Yeah. So and like, you know, I, like uh, I've I've just done some wild stuff. You know, so. Yeah, I don't know. What's the craziest? I mean, it's funny. The one that popped in my head when I said that is, I, mm. well, it was, uh, I was trying to go 250 miles an hour in a Bugatti Chiron uh, uh, Super Sport. Relatable. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Florida, uh, space shuttle runway, and like, you know, you're doing the driver's meeting, and they're like, so, you know, keep your visor down. Uh, cause even though you got a windshield, like if a bird comes through at, you know, 200 and some odd miles an hour, it'll, it'll just kill you. So, you know, one extra layer of protection. I'm like, okay. Oh, and if there's alligators on the runway, like <laughs> don't hit them, try and go around them. Like you don't want to turn too much, but it's pretty wide. 
and uh, and as we're driving up to it, there's just alligators everywhere. <laughs> Luckily, they weren't on the runway. And then the way we did it was we did a 150 mile an hour run, a 200 mile an hour run with a guy in the car, and then he gets out for the 250. But as we're doing, you know, 211 miles an hour. Uh, there's birds, and they, whoo, they go right over the top. And we're both like down, <laughs> you know, like, okay. Maybe they knew what they were talking about. Um, but I go, I do it, and they're very adamant. They're like, don't look down at the Speedo. Just just f- floor it and hold it and, you know, go for 11,000 feet or whatever it was. And when you see the flags, lift and hit the brakes. So I do that, and I'm like, yeah, you know, 250. Uh, and I get back there, and they look at the data. It's like, no, you went 245. I'm like, What? And I'm like, I, I, I was, you know, I was welded to the floor. And they're like, yeah, we don't know. Do it again. Well, it was really dumb to say do it again because the protocol was they change the tires every time you go, you know, Those are over. expensive tires, aren't they? Or they're, that's they're old. They're not as, That yeah. was old back in the day. It was like 10,000 a tire for the Bugattis, the Veyron, for the Veyrons. The Veyron tires had, they were like, they were like impregnated with carbon fiber, uh, they were very unique to the Veyron. These, are, I believe, are just like Veyron spec Michelin Pilot Sport Cup twos. Yeah. So it is expensive, but it's not like, yeah. Not it, what it was, like forty thousand for I, a full set. I think it was more than that. I think it was like sixty thousand for the physical tires. But Jeez. then, but yeah. then, but they were also um, they were bead locked. So the, the actual mm. changing them was a whole process, and it had to be done like in France. Don't even ask. Uh, so. No one had done a 240 mile an hour run and then done another one back to back. It was really a bad idea because the tires were shot. They got heat cycled so much. And I just went again. Without and changing tires, just. We didn't change tires. I just wanted to get it. And like the rain was coming. You know, it was, you know, it was a one day. You only had one chance. Like, do it, do it. So I went. And it turned out the reason why I couldn't go faster than 245 on that first run was that there was crosswinds. And so when the crosswinds ah. hit the car, it creates a vortex on the other side that like pulls the car and it just, it just slows it down enough. So before we knew that, one of the drivers said, hey, he goes, you know, we built in a lot of safety margin. So when you see the flags, just keep your foot in it for another thousand feet or so. Just count to one. Because, by the way, at 250 miles an hour, you're going a football field in like a second. Yeah. It's really fast. That's hard to get another five miles per hour, though, in a second. It is. It is. So I keep my foot welded, but at about – I remember I was was looking this time because I had done it before. I'm like, I'm going to stare at the speedometer this time to make sure. And at 240 miles an hour, a wind hit, and I had to do this. And it was like – I re- if, if I didn't turn the car, like I was going to go off the runway, you know what I mean? Because I, I suddenly had been redirected. A was it right bit as you were looking lane. down, it caught you off guard? It was just, I, I was, you know, I'm, I'm doing this, but it was just, I just, I, I felt something push the car. And it's like suddenly my trajectory was not straight down the runway. It was at an uh. angle. So I had to do this at 240 miles an hour, which was like, just saw my kid's face. It was just, Richard's face just popped into my head. It's like, oh, and then... Kept my foot in it, kept my foot in it, it just wouldn't go over 240. Came back in and said, I'm done. <laughs> like, I don't care. You know, 396 kilometers an hour is fine. It doesn't matter, you know. So that was probably like like the stupidest and craziest thing I've ever done. But that was that was pretty wild. And then I guess the other crazy thing I did was I, I raced Pikes Peak in 2022. And that was, um, yeah, that f- wonderful, but, but also really... I kind of got robbed. It was like super foggy. What car were you? I was in, in a um, Porsche 718 Cayman GT4 Club Sport. Wow. Yeah. Um, which is kind of the worst car to do Pikes Peak in because it's naturally aspirated and rear wheel drive. Mm-hmm. Like you sort of want all wheel drive and as much turbocharging Force as, induction. As, as possible. So, yeah, the car at sea level makes 420 horsepower. At the peak, it was making about 250. Um, so it was, it was a pretty slow way to go, which was fine. Uh, it, you know, it was, it was, it was a lot of work. It was fun. And I had seven days of practice of glorious, perfect, sunny, clear, dry weather. The race is Sunday morning, Saturday night, 10 inches of snow. Uh, and then get there in the morning, it's raining and freezing. Uh, track is wet. And then after like the bottom quarter, it's just pure fog all the way to the top. Like, I mean like 20, I can show you on my phone afterwards, like 20 feet of visibility in front of you. And, you know, sheer 1,800-foot drops everywhere. And, you know, uh, so I made it to the top. I didn't crash. That was something. Have you driven Pikes Peak? I haven't. It's on my bucket list to do. 
You should do it. I you, would you, love you, you'd, to you, do it. You'd be you'd be good for it, and you'd be good at it. Yeah, it's on the bucket it's, list. Yeah, and don't don't not even bucket list. Just do it now. Like it's like, you know, and like I'm I'm itching to go back. It's just that like racing, you know, it it costs a lot. You know, you know, water's wet. Racing's expensive. <laughs> You know, it just, it really is. So. <laughs> I haven't heard that before. Never heard water's, water's wet? wet well, oh. yeah, I haven't heard that. Oh, like yeah. That's that a together. t-shirt, too. Yeah, yeah there, there we go. go. That's water's, a good water's one. Wet <laughs> Johnny Lieberman, <laughs> like, t-shirt line. So, yeah. I've, I've, the more popular one I know is to make a small fortune racing, it takes a big one. Yeah, start with a large one. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah. No, I was, I was just, everything's crazy. It's like, you gotta, you gotta buy oxygen. So, the morning I was doing the middle section, like I didn't turn my oxygen on, and my my crew chief uh, was talking to me, and he's asking me some questions, and I could see the expression on his face was the way I look at my kid when I know he's lying to me. <laughs> you know, you know, you know that expression when you just you're like, okay, what really did you really mm. wash your hands? You know, mm. and he's looking at me like that, and I'm staring back at him. He goes, "Is your oxygen on?" I go, "No." He goes, "Turn your oxygen on." <laughs> Oh, okay. And like, I remember I was trying to buckle my seatbelt and I just like couldn't, I didn't have the wear with the mental capacity to buckle my seatbelt. So interesting. Yeah. Wow. And then suddenly you know, the oxygen's on. It's like, ah, okay. So it's, it's a very weird, harsh environment. And it's just, yeah, it's just, it's a neat, neat, neat race that if, t if it, if, if it wasn't a thing and you today said, Hey, let's race up this mountain. It would never happen in a million years. It's just totally grandfathered in there's, you know, I forget what it is, but like 10% of the field crashes in practice, 15% crashes during the race. Like it's a, you know, the cars are safe now, but they weren't always, um, you know, so it's just, it's just, yeah, it's nuts. Doesn't so, every year, isn't there like a huge accident? And, there's a lot of accidents. The, yeah, there's right. a lot of accidents. You know, I mean, like I said, I think it's like 20% or 25% of the field doesn't make it to the top, you know, they're, 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 but you know, Right now, if you Google Pikes Peak Evo, you'll see this, this. I was just thinking the Evo. Yeah. That was probably one of the more famous crashes. The mo they named a corner after it, Evo Corner. Yeah. And he he was fine. The driver was, was okay from Broken that. arm. I, there was a driver. I shouldn't say fine, but he didn't, you know, it could have been a lot on. worse. Yeah. That car went 1,800 feet, end over, end over, end over, end over, end. Yeah. It was crazy. And I think one broken arm. There's two guys in the car, one broken arm. And like they, I, they did a video for Recaro, the seat maker, about how great this because the seats didn't fail. Yeah. Um. And, you know, and they got and held the cage in. held up and C yeah, which which uh, you've done some racing, you know that not all cages are built equally. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. Whoever built their cage is a very good cage builder. Yeah. And um. Yeah. I'll, again, I, I can I'll show you when we're done. It's bad to talk about photos on a podcast, I know, but like, I got a pic a, a picture from my GoPro of the fog on Evo Corner, and then I always slide it over to a picture of the Evo going off just to show people, like, I could not see that corner. Like, yeah. it was 20 I, feet. That would have scared me a little, too. Not being able to see <sighs> with a cliff right there is... It was just weird because we had total perfect weather for seven days straight, and then the race itself. I wasn't scared. I was just frustrated and annoyed because, like, I, I, could, I, like, I knew... You, you get could, one you shot. Could have done it, you get yeah. one shot. You know? Well, anyone who's driven in fog, even driving in fog on the freeway, like all of a sudden, bam, car, you hit it because they're parked and you can't see in front of you. And again, there could be a you know up there the sheep. Uh, you know, a rock could have fallen. Like yeah. the, the sheep like to grab the hay bales and drag them all over the place. Like it's it's really <laughs> it's, it's a weird race. I mean, that was the thing at the drivers' meeting. They'd be like, okay, yeah, so uh, somebody saw a bear at four thirty, and then there were some sheep up by engineer's corner, but they seem to be off the track now a couple boulders eh, the size of bowling balls but you know just avoid them all right have fun yeah <laughs> you know? it's just like it was crazy wow so oh that sounds cool it you'd love it you'd yeah love it. is your is your son into cars too nah no nah not really you huh. think he will be i don't know he's into you know this week he's into minecraft uh and minecraft legos mm. uh last week he was into harry potter and harry potter legos mm. You know, um, I, I, I got into cars probably when I was like nine or 10. So when I really, like it hit me, like I always liked them and knew about them. Your dad was a car guy, right? 
Yeah. He had a Z, 280Z. Yeah, 280Z. Oh, really? Z. Yeah, I mean, that's honestly, I believe my earliest memory. I, shouldn't, I hate saying honestly. I've been lying about everything else. But <laughs> one thing is true. Um, <laughs> My my dad, yeah, he we I grew up in Thousand Oaks, and so my dad used to love to drive the Malibu Canyons, and so he, I you know I remember this really well. He'd strap me into the front seat in a car seat, and he had a blaupunkt tape deck that had a microphone input, and you could record. And he used to like drive around with me on like Decker Canyon stuff, and like you know record me you know me talking to him. And oh, interesting. Yeah, and he'd play it back. So I have this real strong memory of that. But but my probably the one memory oh, not probably 100 percent was when i was like nine or ten my dad's from montreal we were back in montreal and um in old town montreal which is like gray cobblestone streets there was an orange coontosh and i mean you, again it, you, you just didn't see them you know and especially this would have been probably like 84 at that point they'd only built like a couple hundred you know, the total run of the Countach was probably like 1,500 cars total, but that really ramped up towards the end, you know, like post-86 and on. So like in 84, uh, you just didn't see Countaches, you know, even living in L.A., but like here was an orange one on the gray cobblestone streets in Old Town, and, and my dad liked cars enough that he let me just – it just blew my mind. I like short-circuited, and I just stood there like gaping. Was, there was nothing looked like it at the time. Now there's a lot of things that are shaped like the Countach, but at the time, all cars were front-engine, rear-drive. There was no mid -en And the Mura before it, which was mid-engine, looked like a front-engine car, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So it just looked like a classic sports car. But the Countach was so new, so unique. Um, and yeah, it, it had been out for a decade or so, but I was, you know, I was nine. What did I know? Uh, and that, like, every, uh, the second after that, it was just cars, 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 cars. And that's just all I cared about. That experience to go to a car dealership with um, my my stepdad was like one of the, the memories that I still vividly, like, recall. You know, it's like to watch him like negotiate go oh, for yeah. test drives. Yeah. The, the whole experience was this like wonderful experience that I wanted to actually share with my nephew. And right. My nephew was staying with us. He's, a, he's like a freshman in high school. And I was like, you know, do you like cars? And he's like, well, I don't know much about them. And, and so he would be around like, you know, the, the cars that I have. And I was like, you know what? We're gonna go and experience how to buy a car. Mm. I go, what car would you like when you turn 16? And he's like, Jeep. So I took him to a Jeep dealer and we met the, you know, the 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 salesman at the lot. And it was this guy, he had just started there. Mm -hmm. Right. It was his I think it was like his first day, right? Young man. Very excited that the guy from, you know, the fast movies are there. Yeah, and I was sure. like, hey man, <laughs> I really yeah. wanna share this experience with my nephew. And I let my nephew like pick the car and he's like, okay, we're gonna go for a test drive. And the, the car was like in the storage area in the parking lot. Okay. Right? And I have ne never driven a Jeep before. And it was a manual. Cause I was like, hey, so you, if we're gonna buy a Jeep, you gotta buy a manual. So right, right. the dude never had driven this car. He knew nothing about it. So, so I, I'm driving the car. He, first of all, he doesn't take my license. There's like, this is his first day, and he's just excited, right? Yeah. And so he's in the back seat. My nephew's in the front seat, and I'm driving the car. And we get to this incline. I go, hey, dude, lift up the gate. And he's like, uh, I thought it's automatic. And he's like, and we're just sitting there. So he gets out, and he's like, the intercom, and, and nothing's happening. He's like, hey, man, no one's answering. So I think we got to take the car back, and we got to go downstairs. And I was like, all right. And I thought I put the car in reverse. Oh, no. And whoa, I slam into the gate, right? And, and it's, it's just like, boom. And I'm like, uh-oh, this is not good, yeah. right? And I was like, uh, what do I do? And he goes, he goes, the car, I go, God, how do I put this car in reverse? <laughs> you have to lift it up and pull right, it. There's right, still, like right, some right. weird thing. Yeah, yeah, safety mechanism. Right, yeah. yeah. And I was like, I don't know how to do this, man. I go, come here. I go, you don't know anything about the car? He goes, no. I go, put it in reverse. And he goes, okay, and he does something. And I'm like, all right, and now we're like way at the bottom. Right. Now I gotta really, you know, I, I gotta, I gotta give it some gas. So I do it again, and now I'm in the gate. <laughs> <laughs> the whole gate. Oh is no! Like, Are you serious? I, I, I kid you when not. did this happen? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't want to say. <laughs> 
So right? yesterday, <laughs> the whole yeah. gate is wrapped around the, the, oh. the Jeep. <laughs> yeah, right? your nephew's going to remember I'm those. I'm calculating how right. much damage yeah. this is. This oh, is oh, like, your nephew's like, what a great experience. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Uncle Song. And he's just like, <laughs> oh my God. He's like, oh my God. But imagine a car. video of you yeah. d- surfaces on the internet yeah. of you slamming. <laughs> it's the now it's this is it's a shit show. Right. It's not a little fender bender. This thing, and I'm like looking and I'm looking at this dude. I go, this car is jacked up, man. <laughs> this it's like not look I mean I'm like, this yeah. is uh, yeah. gonna cost the amount of the value of the car. Right. And I'm looking at him. And I'm like, what do we do? And he goes, just leave. And I was like, what? It's my fault, just leave. And I was like, but you're gonna get fired. And he goes, I don't like this job anyway. <laughs> nice. <laughs> right? So anyway, and I'm like, yo, this is crazy. And we so we go home and fast forward. Last week, <laughs> right? I was at AutoZone. Picking up something. Was he working there? No, no, no. No. Oh. And I'm like, and the guy's like, hey, hi, what's up? And I'm like, what's up? And he goes, hey, man, I heard that you like crashed this no. Jeep <laughs> right into the, the gate. And I was like, who told you that? And he goes, my buddy. He's like my, one of my best friends. And I go, what happened to him? He goes, yeah, he quit that job. But anyway, <laughs> that is my experience. I mean, well, the good news is that uh, there's, there's, a, there's a dealer lot insurance thing so it's like an eighteen hundred dollar deductible fixes all that oh really yeah yeah so, okay so i don't feel so bad don't ask me how i know that um but, yeah. <laughs> but no i was gonna say but like the, that dealership experience yeah like <laughs> like how there's no real segue you're doing a great job but going no, back this to dealership that. experience well, no, i was gonna say it's <laughs> gonna be fantastic for him he'll never forget this experience <laughs> yeah. but it yeah. was yeah. it was it was hard to explain because again just b- before the internet like I, I remember when lexus appeared this was this was huge because it was like late 80s and at the time, there was this fear that Japan was going to take over. Japan, they bought Pebble Beach. They're buying everything. You know, Japan, Japanese cars are killing it. Um, and and so Lexus, and so like $40,000 for a Japanese car, which was unheard of. You know, I mean, that's, Mercedes cost that much. And I remember my dad's like, we got to go see this thing. It was like they, they had an event at the local, it was, it was a Cadillac dealer that also suddenly was Lexus. And we went down there and it was at night and they had an LS400 under spotlights. And it was just like, oh, look at it. It's like, this looks incredible. And, and they do stuff like that now. But I think, I feel like for the most part, you just see stuff on the internet. But even with the internet, my first experience with the C8 Corvette was, I it was touring. I was like, I need to go find a dealership that has this car in the showroom. And I convinced this dealership to let me like film a video like 30 minutes before they open and just walk around and show it. And I was like geeking out. It's so cool that even if you see something online or not at all, to just see it in person is such a different experience. Yeah, look. It- until you see a car in sunlight, I always feel like you haven't really seen the thing. Like, you know, like 2D photos or video, that's one thing. Mm-hmm. But like when you actually like lay your hands on it, see how the paint reflects in sunlight, you know, that, that's that's how you get the full measure of the car. Yeah. So. Do you think your son will, or this generation, your son's generation is gonna be able to appreciate cars like you did? You know? no, I mean, I, look, like, the way I did was really weird. You know, I was, like I said, I was riding up a hill to go look at a yeah. Yelpa by myself. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. I, th- mm-hmm. I think for sure. I mean, I think, yeah. I think like, you know, because of what you've done with your movies, because of what you've done, you know, the videos I used to make. I mean, I, I meet people all the time. It's like, dude, everything I know about cars, I learned from watching your videos. Like, oh, you know, so I think I think we're creating enthusiasm. Mm. Um, you know, and like, like my... Um, but the reason I ran into you at Parks is because I had that Porsche, the GT3 RS. Yeah, which and is oh, I drove that car. Yeah, I've driven that. That's that's an amazing. I car. haven't driven it, but yeah. I love your stories with it, yeah. and it looks very nice. Uh, I really connected with that car. But mm-hmm. my 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 nephew's fourteen. He's like Uncle Johnny called me. N- never called me. Always <laughs> like, Uncle Johnny. Do you think maybe like you know I haven't seen you in a while. We could go out <laughs> to dinner. Yeah, sure. Could you bring the Porsche? <laughs> it's like, yeah, I can bring the Porsche. So, Aww. you know, and like I said, like he, 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 you know, he, not me, you know, the thing we do together is when a new Fast and Furious comes out, I take him, you know, that's our, like, that's our thing. On a personal note, yeah. Uh, what do you feel like your dad taught you 
as a father that you have taken to, and applied to your own like, oh, that's relationship? That's a big question. God. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's funny. It's, I've, I've done a lot of therapy, especially recently, because of, like, I, like I said, I had a series of deaths that were just like devastating. I remember my dad, and it, at the time, it just seemed very normal. And then when he wasn't around, I was like, this is weird. All my dad would do is like talk to me about science. He really didn't, you know, history or science. He really never like, it was never like, how you doing? What are you doing at school? Didn't, never came up. Like, you know, all my friends were little idiots. All he wanted to do was tell me about like World War II and science. That's it. And so I remember like, you know, going out to lunch with him all the time and we would talk about the general theory of relativity. And, you know, but, but so I was able to this, you know, this morning, I'm, you know, I remember my dad doing the same thing. I'm like, Richard, if you're in a train and I'm standing outside the train and I, you know, I think you're going 60 miles an hour. And then if you throw a baseball on the train to you, the baseball is going 60 miles an hour. But to me, I see the baseball is going 120 because it has the speed of the train. It has the speed of the, the ball. So that's, that's relativity, like depends on where you are, you know. So my dad is good for stuff like that. And he was, he was a wonderful man, kind man, all that stuff. Like, was he, what, you know, did he give me, a, equip me for life? Like, well, if I would have been a scientist or a historian, maybe. <laughs> he was a good storyteller. And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at telling stories. So maybe he gave mm -hmm. me that. Mm -hmm. um, but I try and be, I always, I always wanted more time with my dad. I, I you know, he worked, you know, when he started his own business, he was working 14 hour days. And so I'm trying to be real present in, in Richard's life. And I haven't been traveling as much. Um, so yeah, so I don't know if that was a good answer or not, but that was I, that's a great you know. answer. Did you yeah. say you lost your mom also? Recently, yeah, I lost yeah in two thousand and twenty one. So you've lost both your parents and my sister. Yeah, wow, I'm, I'm it. <laughs> well, I guess my son, but yeah, yeah, yeah. My sister had a freaky like out of the blue heart attack, um, and uh, my mom was really sick for years and years and years. She had like five different types of cancer, and and and, and that wasn't even what killed her. I mean, she she had a million different disorders, or not disorders, but maladies. Um, yeah, so it was. And then, you know, my best friend, uh, you know, overdeed, thought he was doing heroin, was doing fentanyl. Uh, mother-in-law had an aneurysm. Davy, you know, drowned in a river. It was craziness. It was, wow. like, it was all within like two and a half years. It was, it was wild. So, and uh, yeah, and then pandemic on top of all that. And it was just like, ugh. so it was, it was, it was a lot. That was a lot. But it's been, it's been a lot better since. No one, no, <laughs> no one close has died. So it's, mm. it's been nice. Mm. <laughs> Oh. But it, I mean, there was a time where it's like every six months, it's like, well, who's it going to be? Oh shit! You know? Was there one thing that you learned in therapy that helped you the most? Yeah, um, I don't know about thing, but I I was very angry. Hmm. Uh, I I was very angry, and I was very angry. Um, I couldn't. I would. I would. Uh, I had a very loving childhood. Um, nothing bad happened, but my parents communicated through screaming. My mom was a yeller. My dad was very quiet, very quiet until he wasn't, and then he was screaming. And I sort of learned that, like, that's how you are. And, like, you know, it's everyone in my family was screaming at all times. It's fine. And that, like, Nope, that's actually not the way to be, to have these like crazy angry outbursts. And and I, you know, I just just sort of like trying to be a good person. I, I wouldn't yell, but I was I would get like enraged about stuff that I couldn't control. And therapy really helped me with that. And I had a lot of anger that all these people died. I was very angry about it. I wanted to like lash out about it. And we spent a lot of time exploring that like well you know where's this anger coming from so i think that was my wife commented that she said you know you're a lot calmer these days do you mm -hmm. like have a mantra or do you tell yourself something or like when you get angry do you just recognize it and say there's nothing yeah. to get angry about yeah and i also like also you know you you, you if you, when you're a parent you realize this that like children model their behavior on the way you act mm. yeah and so when i see my son like <laughs> If he can't do a math problem or something, I'm like, boy, he's getting that from me. Mm. You know what I mean? So you yeah. try and you try and like cool it down. You know, it seems yeah. like therapy is something that people that haven't gone through therapy they kind of dismiss it or they sure. don't give it any credit, and then you go through it and you're like, holy smokes! It's like 
finding the owner's manual all of a sudden. Yeah, that's a, yes, right. You, and you're like, I didn't know. You just pressed this. It, oh, this is why. Right. It's a good and analogy. Not, yeah. yeah. Right. Well, it, uh-huh. it, it's yeah, it's it's right. What's an owner's manual? It's an explanation. And so yeah. this this woman, uh, she was able to like, you know, I think you're angry because of this. Yeah. You know, and it was like, oh my god, you're right. So that that's uh, it's been very helpful. Yeah, Johnny, thank you so much for your willingness to be open and share that. Yeah. yeah. Because I think a lot of the listeners that look up to you, that follow you, that connect with you, like you know, with cars and stuff. I think, you know, we forget that, you, you know, you're car enthusiasts, but you're still human beings. Sure. You know, there's things <laughs> that break down, and sometimes you need another person you look up to and going, hey, they they break down like me too. Yeah, it's you know easy I mean? to look at Instagram and see a highlight reel or yeah, yeah. any of that. But, yeah, yeah, it's it's really kind of you and bold of you to open up and feel comfortable. And I thank you for feeling comfortable with us to talk yeah. about it. Yeah, oh, totally. Um, but, yeah, I... I I'm. I can only imagine that this has hopefully helped someone hearing. Yeah, yeah and, and you know the other thing I find, and I not so much with was therapy, but like I've been on this like kind of like uh, body transformation kick. Like I've lost. Yeah, like, you you've lost like almost thirty pounds. No, yeah, but twenty, a little over 20. twenty. You know, but this one has been insane. Where like because I've just been, I said like, well, how am I going to keep myself? Like what what what's one habit I I have that I do all the time? Well, I post on Instagram. You know, I've done over ten thousand posts. Obviously. I'm serious about Instagram. I said, if I do like a weekly update, it'll it'll keep me honest. If I know that like in five days, I'm going to have to post a picture and talk about my weight and whatever, I'm going to do it. If I can kind of like hide in the shadows, I won't do it. And like the amount of people that have like A, signed up with my trainer, but also B, like just said like, man, I struggle with that so much. It's so hard. Thank you so much. I know how hard this is. I had a woman, I don't know who she is, she sent me a DM the other day. She's like, you know what, man? I said, if if that if Johnny Lieberman can lose weight, I can do it. I'm down 16 pounds. I've wow. stopped doing this. I've st- And I'm just like, That's amazing. this is great. You yeah. know what I mean? Oh. Now, I have a long way to go to where I want to get to. But yeah, I mean, it's like my, my, my pants are too big. My wallet falls out all the time. This ring's starting to come off. You know what I mean? Like it's it's a transformation and it's it's really, you know, I'm sure you guys know it's a diet more than anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it's got to like, you know, as much as I love eating, you got you to gotta stick mostly to a to a pretty boring diet. It's, uh, it's awesome you, you, you you're, we're talking about this because I was on the road for like ever this year. And the then, road's the killer. And staying in hotels and then and then I was like, I feel like shit, mm. like internally. Yeah. Like as a human being, I feel like, what is, everything was so, like the, the the headlights dimming, mm-hmm. right? And I would, and, and I go to the bathroom, I would never turn on the light, oh, ever. Really? Yeah, I would like when I would wake up and go to, you know, brush my teeth or go to pee or go to shower, I would leave the lights off because I, I couldn't like stare at myself. You? The yeah, world's yeah, best yeah, looking yeah. man? No, 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 no. <laughs> And then, I mean, even Amelia, I would tell her, I, go, I don't. Second best. They, they I, take <laughs> pictures and I'm like, I don't want to see myself. Like, any movie or project I would do, I was like, I can't see, I can't look at myself. It would get me, Yeah. it would make me well, super depressed. Has, has that changed? As soon as, at November 23rd, I remember I was like sitting there going, what are you going to do then? What are you gonna do about it? Right. It's like I'm smoking like half like half a pack to a pack of, of American spirits a day. Yeah. And you're like, okay, delicious so, but bad for you. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Right, right. But like, <laughs> and then I'm eating yeah. garbage. Yeah, yeah. Whatever I want, I'm eating. Right. And I'm like, well, you feel you, you're you you're perp. Why are you doing this? But what are you gonna do? Mm. And then, so I I threw the cigarettes away and I started going for like a, a walk and I go, I'm gonna start running again, mm-hmm. like, like really running. And then the run, like reprogram my brain. It's almost like rebooting your computer, mm-hmm. right? Or getting like a tune up and going, uh, the reason you feel this way is because your oil is dirty, right? And you, you gotta change that filter, bro. Like every 3,000 miles, like go change it, or even change it at 1,800 miles, because how hard are you going? I have bad dysmorphia, and I get roasted whenever I share that, because like, why? You're like, you're fucking beautiful, or whatever, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I have bad dysmorphia. I can't look in the mirror and feel See, good about th- this myself. Is really? This yeah. is what's beautiful wow. about this conversation, because- that, That's you two. When I, when, I, like, <laughs> when, I see her, when I see her posts, right, yeah. and she's like, oh, 
<laughs> you know, th- amazing. Right? Yeah, and I'm no, like, no, no. Jeez, yeah. I go, I go. I wish I could do that. Yeah, yeah, oh, I, yeah. I, 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 yeah, I, yeah. It's hard to look at those photos for me. <laughs> That's crazy. It's crazy with you two because uh, you know you you guys make a living to some degree off your looks. Like you, know, like you, you're you're good looking. Well, people. It, it's the it's 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 we're we're we feel and and think the, the exact same thing because objectively when I look at you, and then I and I see your videos and I'm like. God, this guy, he's like, he just fucking has everything together. Yeah. <laughs> he's so smart. Yeah, he knows like, what he's fucking doing. Smart. Like, how does he remember he's all confident. this? Like, he's so, yeah. wow. There's charisma. Yeah. Wow. Right? It's like a, wow. it's a, it's a personality. Right. Okay. You know what I mean, yeah, and that's sure, why sure. It, it, this, this conversation is awesome for me because I'm like, yo, like, you feel the same thing. You feel the same thing. We all, have yeah. our I, fucking I gotta problem. tell you, I'm, I thought you guys had other problems. I'm shocked by this. This is uh, no, 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 no. I mean, I mean, wow. like daily, I wake up and I have to hug him because I'm like, I'm worthless, man. Oh yeah, and, well, I, right? I, yeah, like, I, and so this, he, I, I, yeah, and yeah, if yeah. And these dogs are like, I think sent to us because then he right. comes up to me and like certain days, like when I'm like, I don't even want to get out of bed because I'm. I'm a piece of poop, right? Yeah. And then he'll like lay on me. And, I like, I right? know I'm sulking when my dog has come over to me to sit with me. I'm yeah. like, oh, I guess I'm. I need to go take a lap. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I know that I know that mm-hmm. I I. Oh. I, I, I don't allow myself. To, I, I, I have that feeling, but yeah. it, I mean, it goes away in like, you know, I just say, nope, yeah. you know, and I, just, yeah. I, I clear it yeah. instantly. But I, I know that feeling where it's like, I'm, I'm worthless. You yeah. Know? yeah. And I, I still suffer from like imposter syndrome. Same. You know, yeah. Yeah, and, same, and yeah. it's like, it's, you know, uh, it's weird, but I do, you know, like, it's like, why, why, why am I here? And it's like, well, you, cause you're invited, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. So yeah, yes. it's weird. Yeah, it's weird being human, huh? Yeah, <laughs> but it's but thank you, Johnny. This yeah, is, no, yeah, thank, thank you so much me. for coming on. Oh, taking absolutely. the time out of your day to come hey, sit with us. You know, anytime is great. It's a lot of fun. Thanks, Johnny. Appreciate thank you. you.